WBLS New York, number one. Were you here? I'm Frankie Crocker. You know who you are, I trust. And we hope it's a good morning for you. We're about to open up with Return of the Mac from Mark Morrison here at WBLS. It's Tuesday, August 18th, and it's 12 minutes past 7 o'clock. Outdoors, it says, well, 58 degrees. You know it's not the best weather, but it's not that bad either. There's some good music in store for you this morning. And last week, we were talking about Mike Tyson facing suspension for biting off the ear of Evander Holyfield this past June. And we're going to get back to that. But first, I want to get your feedback on an article in yesterday's New York Times by David Rode on August 17, 1997. The article is entitled, Where Has Your Neighborhood Drug Dealer Gone? Now, according to this article, and I quote, New York's drug trade has not been eliminated during the city's three-year crime plunge. A wide range of investigators and observers say it has moved increasingly underground. While pockets of open street sales still exist across the city, a new era of drug dealing is dawning. As dealers adapt to stepped up police pressure and changes in drug use, the more sophisticated neighborhood drug dealers have apparently learned that not drawing police and community attention is crucial. The brazen culture of open selling and street violence, simply put, is now seen as bad business, meaning that in some cases, buying drugs has actually become less dangerous. In comparison to drug-related violence once ruled a stretch of 6th Avenue in Sunset Park, three years ago, on the corner of 52nd Street, a drug dealer killed a rival teenage drug seller, firing two bullets into the back of his head. Two years ago, down the street, another teenager was held to the ground by rival drug dealers and slashed in the face dozens of times with razor blades. Residents have lost control. So the question, New York, is is it under control in your neighborhood? I'm going to be taking your call shortly, but first, let's start things off with Return of the Mac from Mark Morrison. In the hallway of a local Manhattan apartment building, Knight emerges and makes his way up the steps while in the middle of a phone conversation. Look, Ciro, I'm about to go on the roof and get in my commune time, so I'm forwarding all my calls to you. So unless you want to hear me playing the flute, don't call me until I call you. You got it? Yeah, okay, Bruce Leroy. <laughs> Very funny. Now get off my phone. Okay. Bye. Meanwhile, Piper and Tyrone make their way down the street near Knight's building. Ho oh, oh, ho, well, so your mom's gonna buy that for you? Hell yeah! She says as long as I keep being an A student, I can get whatever I want. Yo, hold up, was that Jerry Monique who just turned up the corner? Oh, come on, let's catch up with him. Come on, come on, come on! Where'd they go? Over there, hey, over there, over there by the bus stop. Come on, let's see where they're going. What's up? What y'all doing? Where's Larry? He's on 96. What's wrong with you? Why are you mad? Tyrone, make her laugh. You can't make me laugh because I don't feel like laughing. Yo, Jerry, why are you looking so scary all the- Two menacing looking young men approach them. Where y'all from? Piper and the group look at each other before quickly deciding. Yo, run! The girls take off in either direction. Tyrone as well. Yo, give me the fucking gun. While Piper runs to the left, the two bangers take aim and start to fire. People in the street run for cover. Tyrone is hit with two shots in the back. And the third shot blows off half his arm. He tries to run into the girl's house. The girls make it into their house. 
Tyrone arrives at the gate before falling to the ground, dead. The girl's parents run to the door and shut it. Inside, the girl's parents run to their aid. What happened? What happened? Are you are you okay? They killed him! Oh my god, Daddy! They just started shooting for no reason. Tyrone fell down at the gate. I I think he's dead. Piper sees Tyrone dead on the ground and slowly makes his way over to him. Tyrone! Oh my god! Oh my god! He's gone! Don't worry, nigga. You going right behind him. He fires a shot that goes straight through Piper's back, sending him to the ground. Thought your ass was smarter than the average bear running the opposite direction, huh? See, that's what you get for running again. You'd be dead right now instead of dying. But don't fear. Your end is right here. Freeze! Drop the weapon and step away from the kid! But what the f... What the, what the, the banger yells, turns, and starts shooting blindly. Ah! Knight fires three shots. Ah! Knight then drops aim and closes his eyes before dialing 911. My name is Michael Knight. I'm an ex-New York City police narcotics detective who is now a private dick. I'd like to report at 1033. I'm located on the roof of 598 West 177th Street, Washington Heights. How many more will have to die? before they realize they can't play the game forever. You know, you would think that after all the suffering that our ancestors went through, that we and our children would have become so much more than a bunch of sociological psychopaths strung out on crack, or wanting to sell it, or going to jail or in jail because of it. In fact, history repeats itself. Damn. Why do we always have to be the parts we would rather forget? I mean, can't we get another Malcolm? Or a King? Or how about an Adam Clayton Powell? Damn, as tired as these niggas are today, shit, I'd like another Reverend Ed. At least he was pushing something that gave our people some hope. But nah, all we got is a bunch of street smart dopes with no hope. Killing all the ones who could prove that we had hope. Well, although the price was too steep, at least I turned one away from the game. Who said you can take a hoodlum out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of a hoodlum. <laughs>